Welcome to Christ Alive Church Midweek Talks on our podcast where we tackle the challenges and issues of cultural things going on today. Remember to subscribe on YouTube, we're on Facebook, and on Spotify. And uh, today we're excited, we're going to do part two of a series that we began last week, which is on health. And uh, we've got some really interesting things and topics we're going to discuss today, a, a broad spectrum of people and guests. We're really excited today. We've got Amanda, Matthew, and Micah with us, and we're just going to talk about health and how it relates to each of our lives in different capacities. Each of these three individuals have a different story concerning health and live different lives, and uh, we're including this week some uh, discussion even for students that are saying they're ready to get their lives and their health uh, lined up. And we believe that health is incredibly important um, because our physical body does oftentimes and uh, most frequently um, has a lot to do with our spiritual lives as well. So our physical body and our spiritual body are certainly connected and our physical health has a big part to do with that. So guys, thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we're excited about it. We just want to talk a little bit about your story and um, kind of hear where you're at. And um, Amanda, we'll start with you. Um, I know uh, we've talked for a long time. You're on, on staff here, Christ Alive. Pastor Mark's talked to us for years about health. He's put um, great incentives in place for us as a, as a staff and as leaders. And I think each of us kind of stepped up to that challenge this past year and really decided to do what we needed to do. And uh, I know that I've worked with you closely this past uh, several months, and you've been doing a great job. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about where you're at, and uh, let's, let's just kind of go back to, um, you know, how you feel about your health and where you've been and talk about some maybe some of the challenges and some of the successes that you've had along the way. Okay. Um, I would I would dare to say that my um, health has been much of a uh, roller coaster ride. Um, I have done a lot of ups and downs um, for as long as I can remember, going back all the way to childhood. Um, so it's just recently that I really began, and when I say recently, I mean within the past couple years, um, I've really began to feel the conviction of the Lord. Um, just began to speak to me about the importance of my health from an internal issue, um, not being what culture tells us is important, not being what culture pushes us to do, um, but what does health look like spiritually, um, and how does that affect uh, my walk with Him, and how does that affect um, my ability to minister and guide and teach others as well. Um, so... I finally, um, what you would call surrender <laughs> about a month and a half ago. And I said, you know what, Lord, um, these fad diets and, um, this roller coaster ride is it's, I'm, I'm done with this. You know, this is just about all I can handle. I've done this for a good, um, you know, I'd say 20 years of my life, at least, at least 20 years. Um, and, uh, you know, I really just had a moment with the Lord and I said, okay, I'm ready to surrender this. I'm ready to um, get to a place to where I allow you into the deepest part of my hurts from where this struggle comes from. Um, and so, yeah, so about a month and a half ago, um, you know, I, I reached out to you as well. Um, I reached out um, to someone that was an accountability partner for me um, that I that I communicate with every day, um, a lady, and um, yeah. So it's just been it's been a crazy ride. Um, I've completely allowed the Lord to just minister to some of the deepest places um, that I've never allowed Him access before. Um, and when we do that we will experience a new level of healing that we've never experienced before. So, Amanda, when you say that, uh, I just want to make sure we just kind of, I want to understand, you're talking about, I heard you relate something to your health and with hurts. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you just kind of elaborate more on what that really means for somebody, maybe they're out there listening today and they're saying, okay, I've had hurts or, or challenges in my life, um, 
And how in the world does that relate to my health, particularly physically? We, I think yeah. we can all say we understand how uh, hurts, emotional challenges affect our spirit man and mm -hmm. affect our emotional being. I think that that's understandable, but, but you, you're, you seem to be saying, or if I'm hearing you correctly, that those emotional challenges are connected as well to a physical challenge. Sure. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on what you mean by that? Yeah, so essentially God has created all of us with a void, you know, a void that only he can fill um, and a void that um, ultimately if we run to God when we are in the midst of that void, um, he will fill it and he will fulfill our hearts. Um, but I personally have filled um, a void in my life with food since I have been young because food was always available for me. Um, it was always there in tough situations. It was always there in uncomfortable situations. Um, food was... I was able to buy it. I was able to get to it quickly. Um, and if I didn't have any, somebody had to. And I'm talking in, even in school, you know, even in like high school and stressful situations and middle school. Um, so essentially, um, I have all of these years filled this um, emotional void that stems back to my childhood um, with food. And, you know, I think that food and and food addictions and eating habits are one of like the big elephants in the room that the church doesn't like to talk about mm -hmm. um, because it's socially acceptable in churches. Um, we celebrate with food, uh, potlucks, you know, going out to dinners, going out to coffees, all those types of things are, are kind of celebrated socially. Um, but I come to a place to where I realized I'm killing myself with this. Like I'm killing myself by trying to fill this emotional place that um, has been very hurt and this emotional place that has been um, uh, not treated with care and love and kindness by everybody in my life. Um, I'm feeling it with food and I'm feeling it um, with something other than God. I'm feeling it something with other than spending time with the Lord and asking the Lord to heal that emotional place. Sure. Um, and the beautiful thing about that is that God looks past our destructive behavior um, and can come in and if we allow him um, to completely heal um, some really deep hurts and really deep, dark places um, within us that we've never allowed him to touch before. Good. Yeah, I think that's true. I, I know I shared uh, some last week with my challenges that I had. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have a, a deep degrees of hurt and challenges in that degree, but we were always celebrating with food. And, you know, I was able to maintain uh, physically okay for a long time because um, I was an athlete. But then when that stopped... The foods continued, and I gained a lot of weight. So uh, I, I can identify with that sense of, of kind of medicating. I read something, a uh, quote uh, yesterday, actually, that talked about food is the most abused yeah. uh, medication to deal with anxiety, while exercise is the least used to help us cope. Yeah. Um, and so I think that both of those pieces, uh, anything that's out of balance causes uh, it's going to be obvious in sure. one degree, either internally or even in our physical bodies, that something's out of balance. And so that, that's good. Uh, Micah, so you are a college soccer player. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you played, where'd you play? So uh, last year I played at University of Mount Olive in the middle of nowhere in North Carolina. Okay. But this next semester, I'm going to be playing at Johnson & Wales here in Charlotte. Okay. It's a culinary school, but I'm actually not going to be a cook. I'm hoping to find a wife there who can uh, <laughs> cook for me. Okay. Well, but uh, that's just a hope and dream, you know. Okay. Uh, but uh, my whole past and such, it's always been athletically inclined. Always, since I was about four or five, that's when I started playing soccer. And ever since then, I've just been... Uh, you know, focusing on training and, and soccer in general, athletics and stuff like that. So, but my biggest challenge, of course, is, is dealing with injuries and such. But the biggest challenge that I deal with is balancing athletics and time with the Lord. You know, it's, uh, it wasn't until recently, about eight months ago, when I realized that 
athletics aren't going to get me to Jesus. You know, it could possibly help me lead others to Jesus, but athletics in itself and following my dreams in that are not, is not going to get me to the kingdom of God. You know, in the Bible it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. I have to do that first. I realized that eight months ago. I need, and, I've, and hopefully I've been doing that recently, going, seeking after the kingdom of God first and then athletics next. Being healthy, it's a great thing. It's, the Lord wants you to be healthy. You look at all the apostles, James, Paul, they always say, we greet you in good health, you know. And I, I really try to stay healthy, but the main thing is to seek the Lord first, seek his kingdom first. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's been my motto the past eight months, I'm trying that, to stay healthy. In that. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that, that, that's part of, I think, uh, the challenges that we have um, f as human beings in, in general. Mm -hmm we get passionate over something and we and, and things and sometimes those things whether it's sports or uh, our jobs yep. um, even just hobbies that we have things that we enjoy even our families you know it, the bible is very clear that you know he's got to be the center and the core exactly and i think that there's an awakening within each of us that comes to, that we come to a realization to say that um, if christ is not the center then everything that we do is in vain. Yep. You know, Paul says that, you know, it's very beneficial to take care of your body. Exactly. Physically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He actually compares, he talks about, you know, there's heavy training, great mm -hmm. reads, and you do historical studies about the training that Paul, when he's talking about things, the culture, uh, the times of being physically trained and prepared. Yep. But he's trying to get them to understand what really is beneficial is your spiritual development mm -hmm. um, and your spiritual conditioning and training. Yep. So uh, I know you, we, we talked a little bit earlier about some of the actual physical challenges that you had. You mm -hmm. showed me a picture of yourself while you were actually in college yep. there yep. at Mount Olive, yep. right? Um, and you look different. Yeah. Now, I would say um, many of the majority of people, and I, I think that I, what I love about today's discussion, the majority of the people that uh, we are interacting with have challenges with weight on the other side of the spectrum, gaining weight or having struggles uh, with keeping their weight under control. You, and obviously from that picture, had challenges on the other side of that. You look like a different guy, yeah. super thin, mm -hmm. uh, didn't really look too healthy. Can you walk us through what was going on and what your challenges and changes were there? Yep. Uh, well, at Mount Olive, I, you know, I was training every day, lifting weights every day. And I was actually, before I went to Mount Olive, I was 150 pounds. When I went to Mount Olive, I dropped to like 145, 143 pounds. Now I'm back at 163, that, praise the Lord. But uh, there, even though I was working out and training every day, I wasn't uh, controlling my diet correctly. And that's something I realized when I got back here. I was like, I wasn't feeling good. I was feeling very sick. I, uh, I just didn't need the right stuff. I had no energy. And I was like, you know, if I, if I, you know, starve myself, if I like hold, like if I put a limit on my calories and food, I'll get healthier. But actually I was just damaging my ability to play, my ability to get healthier by limiting the amount of food I had. So when I got back here, I realized that, and I started eating a lot more. And not just eating junk food, of course, but eating healthy stuff, eggs, vegetables, a lot of protein. And I've finally been able to gain weight and uh, be much healthier than I was back in Mount Olive. So when you, how did you decide to land on, you know, you just said, okay, I need to make a dietary change. Where did you, how did you land on what, you, what your intake need to look like? Well, uh, I realized that, my, my calorie intake back at Mount Olive was about 2,000 calories a day, Whew. which is, it's not awful, but when I'm working out as much as I was. Right. It's, for an athlete, for that's an athlete, extremely exactly, low. Extremely low for an athlete. Yeah. Uh, so when I got back here, I was like, I need to boost up my calorie intake because the more calories you have, the more weight you gain, mm -hmm. it, depending on how much yeah. you work out and such. Um, so when I got back, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna boost my calorie intake, eat healthy foods with high in protein, high in, high in carbs as well because I have, to, I have to have enough energy to expel during the day. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to eat healthier. Awesome. Matthew, yeah. you are a junior in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, you have been, I've known you for a few years now. Yeah. I actually have known your family for a very long time, yeah. but I've known you more specifically the past few years because you play on my basketball team. Mm -hmm. uh, come a long way, developing. 
Um, and physically, you've had some changes as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I know we were at a training session earlier this week, and one of the guys said, what's happened to Matthew? <laughs> He's gotten bigger. Um, and uh, you've been on, on a, a plan, a uh, weight training plan. So can you walk us through, um, as, as a busy high school kid, you're playing sports, you've got school, you've, you're at church, mm -hmm. you serve here, uh, you're really involved, you're involved with your family, really connected you've got friends okay so how do you how do you prioritize health uh both physically and spiritually how do you how do you try to approach maybe you don't always do it great all the time mm -hmm. i get your busy schedule but how do you uh try to manage that as a student well i think that like it's kind of difficult to do that um because of my schedule i try to find as much time as possible to really affect my life uh, spiritually by staying in, in the Word and praying um, as much as possible, you know. Uh, trying to like, even during like workouts, whenever, I'm just like, think about it, you know, start like praying in my head. Wait, know? wait, so you're saying, so when you're working out, you're putting your energy toward Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay, because I think there's a passage in the Bible that says everything you do should be done unto the Lord. I love that. That's cool, man. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Yeah, so, and like, try to keep that because I don't have a lot of time. I try to find as much time to like read the Bible as possible. It's it's really hard. And I kind of struggle with that, trying to find the time to do that, spend time with family, work out, do school. All that's like really hard for me, like my schedule. And I feel like I just procrastinate a lot about trying to do all that stuff. And, uh, but whenever I'm like, whenever I wake up and I get into the Word, I feel so much more energized. Like, I feel like I have energy throughout the day to do all the stuff I have to do. Like, procrastination is just gone whenever I do that. It just uh, feels great to really read the Bible in the, in the morning. I feel like that I get, like, rejuvenated every morning, like, through a heavy workout at night or throughout the day and doing basketball workouts, you know. That just, like, every morning just rejuvenates me, and it's, it's great to feel that. Awesome. So um, I know, Amanda, I wanted to ask you, I know that, um, so we've, uh, we've talked many times and um, I've had the privilege to work with all three of you guys with, with, your, with your exercise routines and plans um, and uh, some of your nutritional pieces. I know you and I talked, you, you've had a similar type of experience when you're exercising. Yeah. Um, as Matthew, uh, I know that we've talked about yeah. when you're walking, um, when you're doing your cardio. So what, what's going on with you when you're doing that? Yeah, so um, people think I'm crazy um, <laughs> because I will, uh, I walk at different tracks and stuff. And um, uh, I will say that when I go to exercise, I don't really, um, I don't really have a goal in mind yet when I go to exercise. I just know that I need to move my body that day. Um, and so that's a big step, um, mm -hmm. you know, to not, um, to not have a goal and then not meet your goal and then feel like a failure and then you get in a cycle and it just, it's, it's, a, it's a cycle that people can get into. But um, yeah, I just start walking and it's dramatically um, impacted my prayer life. Um, that is some of the most uh, deepest healing points that I've experienced with the Lord um, because uh, I walk and I, I just began to ask God to just show me um, the ugly parts. I, that's what I say. I say, okay, God, show me my ugly parts today. What is it um, that you want to work on me um, in this moment? What is it? Um, and most, most days when I'm walking, um, I finish um, in tears, and um, it's just, uh, it's, it's hard That's to explain. That's not from pain. Or... It's not from pain. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm That's sweating. That's more like healing, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm sweating. Okay. Um, I, I'm sweating, and I'm getting my, my walking in, you know, several miles at a time. Um, but it is, it is such a deep spiritual healing process that's taking place. Um, and it's because I'm allowing myself to be vulnerable before the Lord. And I am not putting my focus on um, 
what culture says I should put my focus on. And as an example, I was walking one day um, around the track and I think I was a good, I don't know, two weeks into healthy eating, um, being conscious of making sure that I work out three and four times a day. And I remember I was walking around the track at the YMCA and I tell the Lord, I say, I don't understand why I've not lost more weight than this. Like I have been eating so healthy. I have said no to ice cream, to cheeseburgers, to French fries. I'm like, all these things I've said no to. And I have been drinking water and I've been walking weekly. Like what gives? And God said to me, this is where you're not understanding me right now. You want this outward change. You want this outward shedding of all of these hurts and all of these years of bad habits and years of filling this void with other things other than myself. And I'm not concerned with that. I'm not concerned with what you look like. I'm concerned with the deep hurts in your heart that you have not allowed me to minister to for all of these years. And again, a weeping fest comes because I'm like, oh, it's, you know, when, you know, when God speaks, he speaks. And, um, that was a, that was a defining moment for me. I, I think I texted you that day. I was yeah. like, Hey, this is what God said. You know, I texted my accountability partner that day, um, because it was something that just woke me up. And I specifically heard God say, stop looking at the scale, stop weighing yourself, stop focusing so much on whether your clothes fit and what it's going to feel like to be this size or that weight. Stop it. Focus on what I'm walking you through. Focus on the healing that I'm walking you through because the internal healing and the internal restoration that needs to happen within me, within all of us, for, for whatever reason, um, will eventually show itself on the outside. Yeah. There is an internal transformation that will happen, and it has nowhere to go but begin to transform you on the outside as well. Yeah. Good, good. Um, I know Matthew already shared a little bit about his schedule, mm -hmm. and I appreciate the the openness there. That's challenge, Micah. As you're as you're planning your transition to another school, and um, multiple facets of your life are shifting, and mm -hmm. uh, what can you speak to some of the folks that may be in your same situation maybe they're not college athletes but they are working a job and they're looking for a wife at the college yeah. and they're uh they're students mm -hmm. okay they're young adults and they're trying to figure out their busy schedules they're mm -hmm. trying to juggle part-time job can you talk to them a little bit how how do they balance the physical spirit the physical health and the spirit man how how are you planning to approach it and maybe encourage others successes and, and some of the failures maybe even of what hasn't worked for you? Well, I always uh, start the day, I try to always start the day with one Proverbs and five Psalms a day. And that always starts me out with a good, you know, spiritual, uplifting, you know, moment of the day. And then I go into, you know, what are my plans for that? You can always create a to-do list of what to do. You know, I try and always get a workout in later in the afternoon, try and stay healthy and that such. Um, but uh, the, one of the main things that I, I need to stress to almost every one of the athletes and every, everybody dealing with this is your mental capability to do things. Mm. Your mentality in this, and whether it be motivation, uh, influence, anything like that, your mentality has got to be, you know, grade A. You, you've mm -hmm. got to, and the good thing is about mentality, um, it goes hand in hand with spirituality. We have, yeah. you know, a lot of people, we, me and Matthew were actually looking at it yesterday. This guy, he broke a world record of planking for eight hours. Yeah. I, we were like, how, does he able to, how is he able to do this? And he's like, yes, there's pain, but it's, the main problem is your mental, is, is like these thoughts that come in your head, oh, you can't do it. And he's had to learn how to fight those off with hours of training. Yeah. You see, with being a Christian, we have a cheat code against, you know, the mentality, the evil mentality of, you know, you can't do this and stuff like that, these negative thoughts. His name is Jesus. This, this, this Chico that we have, Jesus, he gives us the hope. He gives me the, like, the good mentality of being able to press through because he is, you know, my living water. 
He is my, my, you know, my energy. He is my everything, you know? And that's something that I would like to stress to everyone is that no matter what you're going through, mentality, you know, your health, whatever, Jesus has helped me throughout yeah. all this. Jesus has pushed my mentality through the roof. He has been my, my, my sustainer, yeah. my help, you know? Yeah, I think that's really good. Uh, I, I know you, you know this. Every practice we have, mm -hmm. I reinforce again, basketball, 80% of it's all in here, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and I know that's just a generic number that we use, but um, in everything, how we think and approach mm -hmm. matters entirely. Yep, yep. Uh, I mean, if we go back to our, our, our failures and the challenges that we faced that we did not overcome, ma the majority of those were not because we weren't able, it was because we gave up mentally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. and, 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 or we had a setback and didn't allow our, our mental capacities to overtake us. Now, here's why I love what you said there, Micah, is that how it's connected with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because there is a massive cultural movement of, about mental power, mental authority, uh, mental fortitude. Mm -hmm. But the reality is eventually that does not sustain a person. Yep. It'll yeah. crack. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people, and we can we can look through lives, and people do overcome with without God. Even mm -hmm. though we know God is still with them, they're not acknowledging that God is the is their foundation, mm -hmm. and the reason why they're becoming successful. Um, they over they they achieve a lot of things, and from the outside, we like we're reading in Psalms. Mm -hmm. It's like my enemy. Yep. Not necessarily like our enemy, but it feels like the world the, the, is a, accomplishing things and we're mm -hmm. like, yeah. what's the deal? I, I think a lot of it is we see surface yeah. success on the outside. And we don't necessarily know what a person is dealing with internally. Yep. Yeah. And, and the fears and anxieties and frustrations and really, I think, uh, in a working world, and I, I can say this for myself coming Coming from that, you know, I, I've been, I was saved at a really young age. Uh, I've lived for Jesus, been in ministry for 22 years. Um, and uh, I've, I've worked different jobs and pastor and done it all. And I can say even in my own life, um, the challenges of trying to accomplish things on your own and being performance based. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing is... Uh, is that we we have to realize that Jesus is that underlying piece. And then when we miss the foundational piece, not underlying as a priority, but the foundational piece. Again, going back to Paul talking about building anything, anything that's built on a foundation that's not Christ, it's 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 not going anywhere. It's not going to stand. Jesus tells us this in the Gospels. It's like building a house on the sand, mm -hmm. it's when a storm comes, it's going to fall down. So you can have the most beautiful outside of everything and everything looks like it's good, but under, underneath, you know, it's not solid. And yeah. so I, I think that it's important for us to realize that if we do crack <laughs> mm -hmm. on our mental fortitude mm -hmm. or our mentality cracks, mm -hmm. it's okay because yep. we have a strong foundation in yep. Jesus. I think that that's a really important approach to where we are. Heading, closing out today, Amanda, what, what is something you would like to say to, to listeners today? You are a, uh, you're a children's pastor here. Mm -hmm. You're a working professional. Yeah. So you're, you have to try to juggle a very busy schedule yeah. as well. Um, how do you, how, what's something you can leave with people as far as prioritizing their lives and uh, working with their physical health and their spiritual well-being? Yeah. Um, something that I have learned um, has been to take it, you know, the, the saying is, as they say, well, take it day by day. Um, when you are um, when you are battling or finding healing over any type of addiction or any type of um, struggle that you're trying to overcome, uh, day by day is far too much sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, so I say um, just take it moment by moment. Take it situation by situation. Um, when you are aware and when we are aware of our emotions, when we are aware of our feelings, when we are aware of um, our mental state in that, in that moment, 
um, we are setting ourselves up for success to make a healthy choice. And um, that doesn't just go for food and exercising. That goes for anybody that could be struggling with um, with alcohol, with tobacco products, with narcotics. It's taking it moment by moment. It's taking yeah. it step by step and situation by situation. Set yourself up for success through the Lord in every moment that you can. And the only way to do that is to start your day with the Lord. Mm -hmm. The only way to do that is to go into every situation and every moment with the Lord. And the only way to do that is to finish every day and finish every success and every failure with the Lord. So mm -hmm. you got to start, you got to meet him in the middle, and you got to finish your day with the Lord, mm -hmm. regardless of what it looks like. You could have a day that is a total bust, and you're just like, I... I messed up today. Like I did not make healthy choices. I was not in control of my emotions. I was not aware of um, myself today at all. And allow the Lord to minister to that. Allow God to minister to us and to yourself when you're not perfect. Allow him to minister to yourself when you mess up and allow him to minister to you when you feel like you're on top of the world. It's starting yeah. and ending every day, every moment, every situation yeah. with the Lord. Good. And yeah. you will find success through that. Awesome. Yeah. Matthew, what do you want to leave with students that are listening today that tuned in this week? And what, what would you just like to encourage them when can, talking about their physical health and their spiritual well-being? Mm -hmm. Well, like Amanda said, um, we, I have a lot of step, uh, we have a lot of like, um, situations where I, I fall behind in what I'm trying to do. And it really hurts like my mind, my soul, and my, my health. Um, when I miss like a few days, and like, oh, well, and it hurts. When you say fall behind, you're talking about like setbacks. Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I just wanna say like, I think that when we are keeping a healthy spirit, uh, we keep our uh, healthy spirituality in us, like by just continuing these, like throughout the day, we just continue to stay in prayer, stay in the spirit. I feel like that helps our, first our bodies, our minds and our souls, all they all benefit from that. And as we keep our healthy diet, we keep a healthy uh, track of work, of exercise and stuff like that. It helps our body and our soul. I feel like they go, they coincide with each other and they like, they combine and they, help us through the days. So Matthew, how important is it? I know I already know you have strong accountability around you. Mm -hmm. One of those people are sitting right beside of you. Yeah. 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 Um, the other one's sitting across from you. <laughs> the other one's your dad. These are just three that I know. I, you know, how important is that as far as, as a teenager having accountability? How, how important is that for you? I think it's a super important because some days I'm just like, I don't want to do anything. I'm tired, <laughs> wake up late. That's all of us though. Exactly. Okay. Um, but when Micah or my dad, or you even like say, how's it going? Or uh, you want to get this workout done? Like Micah says that to me all the time. He's like, Matthew, you want to get this workout done? I'm like, bet, let's get it done. And it just, it's you're like, great. Inside you're saying no. Uh, uh, yeah. In, inside <laughs> I'm like, oh no, 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 no. But this you're like, I don't want to tell coach. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> and uh, when Micah says that, I'm just like, you know what? Let's get this done. Let's get this done. On the inside, it might be like, oh. but like on the outside, I'm like, you know what? This is going to be great for me, you know? And, we, and every time we're like working out, we put on some praise music. It's just like a great time to like build yourself up through that. So I think accountability and through uh, people around you, like keeping you accountable and what you're doing spiritually, uh, exercising and um, through school and stuff like that. It's great to have that there because it really motivates you to get it done. Awesome. Closing comments. Well, um, if I could stress anything to my peers and to anyone, is that even though we talk about health, man cannot live on bread alone, but everywhere that comes from the mouth of God, right? So we can feed ourselves with healthy things, and that's what we're supposed to do. But man cannot live on bread alone. We cannot live on just our physical health and, and such. And so we have to focus on the Word of God. If I could stress anything, we have to focus on the Word of God. I am extremely busy, but I make sure I make it a, a like, 
I make it mandatory in my life to focus on the Word of God. Prioritize. Prior, exactly, as I was yeah. looking for the word there. Um, I prioritize the Word of God because that is what sustains me. Mm. I cannot live without the Word of God. And that's, that's all I need to stress today. That's awesome. You know, it's been great today um, to be able to have another conversation about health. And uh, I, I think it's a, a, an awesome opportunity for each of us to really stop and reflect and look at our own lives and see what adjustments need to be there. Maybe you're watching today and you're really struggling uh, with your physical health one way or another. Maybe you've had challenges with you know, being too thin and feeling unhealthy and maybe you've been on the other side, you feel overweight or maybe you're having injury issues. Well, there's a physical way to deal with that and we have to do some practical things, but maybe you're on the side that says, my spiritual health is in shambles. I'm physically fine um, and the doctor gives me a good bill of health, uh, but spiritually I'm really struggling. Here's the thing. We start with Jesus, allow him to do the work in us and we let that be the foundation, and then we build upon that. And so I wanna encourage you today to stop and reflect, see what places and areas in your life that you think you can change and adjust to better the kingdom of God. God has a life, a great plan for you, a life that's full of abundance. He promises this in John chapter 10, verse 10. He says, I've come to give you life and to give it to the full, an abundant life. There is, un there is unknown riches and glory that God plans to give to his people. And it's not physical or just m uh, money. Um, it's a life that's full of abundance and peace and joy. So thank you for joining us today on Midweek Talks. Thank you for being with us thank today. You. I'm proud of all three of you uh, to see you grow. We'll look forward to seeing you next week as we go through Midweek Talks. Remember, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify. Have a great week.